It's mailbag time again. Loads of stuff here. This is interesting. Don't know what that is. Loads of cling film. Completely unnecessary. I suppose it's well protected, given that much. So I've got all the other outer layers of plastic off. Now I've got the inner layer of plastic that's on here. This is supposed to be lead free solder. BD366.4 mil. What I think this was supposed to be was low melt solder. It just says lead free. It doesn't say what the actual mix is apart from HBD366. Pretty sure it's supposed to be business solder anyway, so especially low melt. Let's get the soldering off like that and give it a try. The plastic wrapping, we've got this tape around the outside. There's another tape around here as well, like this. I really like putting these things in plastic. There's like layers and layers and layers of it. It's ridiculous. I'll just nick this one so I can peel it off. Now, underneath that, we've got some tape. That looks like a no. That's not low melt then, is it? That's currently 160. Okay, it's at 180 now. Nothing. Try 190. Nope. Well, this isn't low melt solder, is it? So we've now got it set at 210 degrees. And it's only just starting to melt. Just doing it there. Not low melt solder. 210. This is the standard lead free stuff. That's not what I asked for. Don't forget to check out links down below for anything I've shown a mailbag. I don't know, maybe this is okay if you want lead free solder, which isn't low melt. Pretty sure it's not what I purchased though. What is this? Instant repair paste. Right, this is supposed to be sealant. I think I'll be using this on my concrete water tank. Because my concrete water tank's got some big gaps in it and cracks. And I'll see about chucking this on, see if it uh, works or not. Could be a complete waste of time. <laughs> right, a bunch of little feet. Well, different sizes of feet. So I have eight of each different size. These smaller ones. Uh, about 12 millimeters across. They've got a little um, washer in there built into them, so you can just see it there in the camera. So it helps to reinforce them. These are basically quite rubbery feet. Well, they're fairly stiff actually, quite stiff rubber. Probably a plasticized PVC, at my guess. These ones here are larger ones, probably about 19 across. And these ones here are about 13, 14 ish, around that sort of size. Height of these, height of that one is about 8 mil. Height of this one is also about 8 mil and the height of this one is about 5 mil. They look like quite nice feet. Injection molded over metal. It's always nice to have a collection of different feet you could use. Sometimes you give it to gear if you've got screw holes in the bottom, no feet, and you can use the screw holes so you can just bolt some new feet on instead of using stick on ones because bolt on ones last a lot better. You, know, you can drag the gear around and it fall off. The stick on ones will gradually move around and they'll slide and get caught on things and fall off. And they're a bit of a pain. To, they're okay if you don't move gear around a lot. If you've got heavy things, then it's worth getting some of these screw on ones and using those if possible instead. Magnets. Can I get them out? I think the large number of nails of bubble wrap is to stop these things from sticking to things in the post. There's a pretty large powerful magnet so there's two rows here i think this was at 20 magnets really strong if i can get the thing off i'll show you they've got uh, nylon in between them as well so you can separate them pretty easily high power magnets very handy things to have laying around you never quite know what you're going to need them for there you go let's try sticking to a surface rather than picking up something which may or may not be steel hmm. well they're definitely pretty strong magnets i've put one of these on a fridge just now and i have trouble getting it back off again yeah, that's pretty good. Now, the reason we actually got these was to use on the motorhome for the curtains because we used to have Velcro hold the curtains on, you stick up Velcro, and the Velcro doesn't last forever, it wears out. Over Christmas, my wife decided to revamp all the curtains, and I had to put a curtain right up and that sort of stuff to one side, but we also had to stick some magnets on them, and so these little pockets put into the curtains, and the magnets go into those. I already had some little magnets, but they weren't as strong as these. These are somewhat tougher. So, the magnets have used are holding, they are doing the job, they're only barely strong enough, they're only just doing it. They're okay, but um, that's what I had. So you know, now I've got some beefier magnets, so if those other ones in the bus get a bit weak and they decide not to hold anymore, we're going to replace them with these, if I don't use them as something else first. That's entirely possible. Assortment of heat shrink. 
it's actually fairly expensive to buy it over here from like places like Jaycar and places like it's quite expensive. A lot of times you just use a small little piece and cut a little piece off, you know, like you might be using half a length of this for example. Different colours and stuff as well, and got some black ones too. And I thought this might be a better way of doing it rather than getting big long lengths which I have to then try and shove into a drawer. So I'll get some of these assortments and this is convenient to use. I think it might be better than using, you know, one metre long pieces which are also expensive to get with in these little assortments like this, so actually pretty cheap. So we've got 60 pieces of 1mm, 30 pieces of 2mm, yeah, you can read it yourself in. So it's up to 14mm, so between 40mm long and 80mm long, depending on the diameters. These ones will be slightly different, these are just long, I think might be very really similar actually, it might be just all in black instead, I think it's probably the same kind of arrangement. You always want heat shrink, you always want it. It's uh, more heat shrink. So this is different widths, this is meant for doing batteries. Pull the smallest one out. I've got an arrow, so doing like one cell up to eight cell, I think it was. It's quite thin. This, this is a hard material specifically for doing battery packs. This is an assortment for doing those. So if I need to make a battery packs or if I need to do anything with batteries where I want to stick them into an enclosure or something, then I could do that. Anything else I want to use this particular material for. This is meant for doing battery packs, that's what it's actually specifically sold as being used for for different cell packs. So one, two, three, four. Maybe six and eight, I think it is. There's a whole range in there. You see down there, different sizes. Again, links for this thing down below. These are potentially transistors. The SOT 23s, anyway. I think it's a 2A. So these are transistors. I think these are 2A and 3906s. I'm pretty sure it's what they are. Let me check my stock. Hold on. So here's my box of service mount parts, or one of my boxes of service mount parts. So I've got a whole bunch of 2 and 3904s, but hardly any 3906s, which are PMP transistors. I've only got a few there, so let's just pull one of those out. And I think these are marked as 2A. Yeah, that's 2A. So 2A is a 2 in 3906, well it's actually the MMBT 3906 to be precise. Now I've got a bunch of those which I need for my Datron project. So I'm using transistors to switch voltages to boost up the drive to some of the segments for the annunciators for the plus and minus symbol. Right, let's try and get more in there. It's almost like peeling the film off a screen, isn't it? All done. Sorted out. I think we need to find out what's in this thing. I don't think it's a sex toy. Oh, this is going to work, is it? You sharpen it again. I only sharpen it long ago. And she has a real knife. I'm trying to be careful not to dig into whatever's inside the tube. I'll go back once I get it out. Progress. I've got one in free. Inside out. And it's covered in cling wrap as well. Oh, I still like using the cling wrap. There you go. It's a thick silicon mat. It's also got this film on the back of it as well to help protect it, I suppose. Keep it nice. So I've been buying a silicon mat thinking that I can use this to help keep noise down when I'm trying to do recording. So any of my bits of gear, like my hot air station for example, which puts out quite a bit of noise. I was thinking about rubber mounting everything, putting this silicon mat underneath all these bits of gear and fans and power supplies and what have you. And trying to keep the noise down. Purchased a whole bunch of this and then I picked up some quite thick chunky stuff from uh, an event recently which they're giving away for nothing. So I think this is 50 centimeters wide by probably one meter I think. Could be 50 by 50, I can't remember, it might be one meter, I can't remember. But there'll be links for this in there below. But it's a certainly you know sort of thing which is handy to have laying around as well. You could use it for all kinds of things. Because it's heat proof so you can you know you can actually solder on this and it wouldn't actually matter. Being silicon, be fine. So you can actually use it as a, as a mat for your bench as well if you wanted to. As long as there's no electrostatic issues, of course. You know, you, you probably have like a small section of your bench where you do soldering and you don't have to worry about damaging the bench top. You know, if you're using hot air, for example, you can lay down the hot air on that section without worrying about damaging your anti-static mat. Like mine, you've got discoloration over the place, we've got these hot spots, things like this, where I've put hot things down on the bench or I've been doing hot air work and it's gone through to the bench top like this. Which is a bit of a pain, but it's the nature of electronics, isn't it? Things get hot. Two more items left to go. Nearly there, it's been quite a big mail bag this one. Bag inside a bag thing going on here. Hmm. So, inner bag opening up. This is from Uz Uzbekistan. Whatever that is. <laughs> I've heard of it. 
to the stands somewhere. Oh, okay. It's some more RTC modules. So I purchased a few different ones. These are looking very similar to ones which I showed previously, actually. They look the same. Yes, yeah, exactly the same. So identical to one I got before. We've got a bunch of these ones, exactly the same, although it's got a different naming on it. The board is identical, same layout. Um, these are the DS3231SN. Yeah, DS3231SN. If I can get the light on it right, you might be able to see it. So there's the parts, and there's also a flash chip over here as well. So as I mentioned in the previous mailbag, I've got exactly the same board, different manufacturer, different markings, but the board layout is identical. So this must be a open source design, which has been copied by a couple of different manufacturers and then produced, because it looks identical to the other one. So my wife just found where Uzbekistan is, former, former Russia. Surrounded by stands, apparently. Just like I said. It's over there. No, it's it doesn't make quite a point. I could point in that direction, I could point in that direction. You still get there eventually. That's deep, man. <laughs> <sighs> no, it's not deep, it's a severe. Oh. Power supply, GPS antenna, what's this thing? Ah, I think I know what this is. This took a long time to get here. It's a GPS DO, GPS disciplined oscillator. So I saw this listed well, probably about three months ago now, I think. It must have been about October, November, that kind of time. I thought I'll get one of these because my other lab. I've got a rubidium standard which I use in here, which powers up in, I don't know, probably a few minutes, it's pretty much there, and getting stable. But my other lab doesn't have a decent 10 megahertz standard there. All the gear's got like ovenized oscillators and that sort of stuff, which is, you know, alright, but it takes a long time to warm up. My um, rack hole Dana counter that's out there, it takes like an hour before it stabilizes, which is just too long. So I picked up one of these. It's got an uh, antenna input there, SMA connection, which will go to this GPS antenna. There's a frequency there, 1575.42 megahertz, 2.7 to 5 volts. I guess it's got um, some active circuitry inside it, which is probably capacitively coupled or something. On the back here we have two BNCs, 10 megahertz and a one pulse per second. This was planned for the other lab where I do radio work. Well, well, I intend to do radio work. I've done almost none. Um, I set the lab up about a year ago and I think I've probably spent about maybe one day in total in there working on things so yeah I can tend to spend all my time in here but I didn't have enough room here to do both lots of gear at the same time with the RF stuff and all my other bits and pieces I need for doing testing and stuff so I just put it up into two different places and as I don't do that much radio work that makes sense to be the one which I shoved out in the other room but yeah I've got a whole bunch of gear out there and this is going to be going out there I'm tempted to power this up and see how it takes the lock so I was looking at the power supply here, I noticed it's made in Cambodia, and it's not often you see that kind of label on things anymore. You know, it's always made in China or somewhere like that, but Cambodia. It's been a while since I've seen the Made in Cambodia badge. But this is by Sagemcom, which is a French brand, which is quite interesting. Anyway, I'll plug this thing up. I've got a death adapter to plug this into, so I'll power this thing up and see if I can get a GPS lock with that antenna inside the house. I doubt I will, but you never know. Okay, got plugged in, powered up. My cat, my cat's decided to come in. Say hello. Hi. Hello. I think she's gone again. So it says alarm. I'm guessing that means it hasn't got a lock, and the power light is flashing. So let's just leave this on for a while. See if it will get a lock. It might take a few minutes. Um, if I don't get a lock in here, I there's enough wire here to actually put the antenna on like a windowsill or something like that. It might actually get a log over there, but I'm going to try over here on my desk first, see if that works. So I've hooked up my Iridium standard, which is only just turned on and warming up, and the GPS DO. So the GPS DO is on channel 1, which is the one which is currently triggered on. So channel 1 is the one which is locked to, and channel 2 is the Iridium standard, which I've only just turned on, and it's warming up, and you can see it's hunting. You see, the, it's, it's, it's trying to find the lock point. Okay, so that's why it's shifting around over the place. So what I'm going to do is get the GPS DO to be lock and the Rubidium to lock, and we'll see if the frequencies come out the same. They should be very close. You should see basically synchronisation 
But obviously, as I've only just turned them both on, they're both going to be having a settling time. They won't be perfectly locked. It will take a while for them to stabilise completely. But they should be pretty close once they do get a lock. Um, the GPS currently still shows an alarm. So I think I need to actually run an antenna over to the window there and see if I can get the window to lock. Oh, and that's just about locking. Look, see it's getting there. That is the rubidium saying it's almost there. You can see there is a difference. So I'm going to move this GPS antenna and see what happens. So everything's been on for about five minutes now. And as you can see, the, the rate here is getting slower. They're getting closer and closer as, as it's all warming up and settling down. I've chucked the GPS antenna outside the window. It still may not be getting any great signal just hanging off of down the side of the wall there. But the alarm light is also still on the GPS DO. So that may mean it still doesn't have a satellite lock or it doesn't have enough satellites or it's still not actually had the time to get a decent lock and get its timing and stuff tuned. I don't actually know enough about GPS DOs to better say what the alarm light means. But as you can see, they're getting pretty close. Right, it's been 10 minutes. You can see it's really close now. The unit has now got the alarm light turned off and the power light has stopped flashing. So there's probably some kind of indicator of what's going on. So I'm guessing that now means it's got a GPS lock and so there's a slight drift still but maybe over a period of time that will settle down a little bit more but considering that each time you get one waveform pass there's one hertz difference per second. So if I go um, say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, say 7 seconds for one hertz difference. So what's that? Look at as 0.1 hertz, 0.13 hertz or something like that. I should do massive hit, it's always a disaster. So it's 150 millihertz out, say, between the two, between the rubidium and the GPS discipline oscillator. Which one's truly correct? Don't know. But they're close enough for my needs, regardless. They're both well close. I mean, I only really need one hertz accuracy for what I do, and this is well below that, so it's absolutely fine. It might even get better once it's had more time for beyond, you know, after half an hour or an hour, they might lock on even closer. So it's been on now for about 20 minutes, so you can see how close it is now. That's, that's even better. So I believe this actually has a, a small OCXO inside it. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, there's a little bit of warmth inside it. So it could be that it's got an OCXO which has to warm up and stabilise before the PRL will actually tune it properly and, and lock with the GPS. You can see it's getting better and better. Okay, so I just read on the listing on AliExpress for this item, which is where I got it from. There'll be links down below for this. The power light being off means no power, obviously. The power light flashing means no GPS lock, which is what I was having before. And power light on solid, which is what it is now, means it has a GPS lock, and that's fine. The alarm light is specified. When the alarm light is on, it means it has a frequency error of greater than 0.1 hertz. When the alarm light is off, it's less than 0.1 hertz frequency error. That's quite nice to know as well. So um, alarm light is off, so it's less than 100 millihertz error. As you can see on the scope, it's getting better and better. Right, so it's now been about 45 minutes, and you can see now how close these are. It's just absolutely crawling by. So it's, the longer I leave it, the slower it's getting. So, you know, probably another hour, it will be rock solid, I'm guessing. But don't forget, this is the difference between a GPS DO and a Rubidium standard. That's what I'm comparing here. So, there's not much in it. Check out the links down below. This certainly seems like a good little gadget. And you can see it's pretty stable. At least it is when I'm not knocking cables around. It's my bag. Buy some stuff. Links down below. So, if you found it interesting, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Click the bell icon, all that usual stuff. This is certainly a good investment. I think it's about $120 in New Zealand, something like $140 in New Zealand. So it's about, say about $70 US, something like that. I don't remember exactly, but it's on AliExpress. I'll be linked down below for these things, so make sure you go and check those out. And uh, don't forget the merch if you're interested in merch. Catch you later. Bye. Afita Zane. I used to know more ways of saying goodbye, but I don't remember them now. Catch you later.